Hello, good morning, and welcome back. So in the previous video, what we did was we created our application, and then we create um, our endpoint for task, and we we're able to test it, modify it, test it, and then we ended the video there. And so we've said, oh, you know what, our backend is working, we can put something in, get something else. And we did that by using a RESTful um, client tester that we had in Chrome, but of course you could have used the one that you can a standalone application. Anyway, in this section, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the front end now for a task, right? The client module. So we're going to create a client module. We kind of created the last time using Yo, Yeoman um, NG full stack colon module, the sub generator module, but we're going to delete that and just recreate it just for the hell of it. Not because it's the only thing wrong with it or whatever, just to show that we started over and where we started from. And once we have that module created, remember it's going to create a number of files for us. It's going to create view, it's going to create controller, um, it's going to create a um, factory class that we can use for our DO. It's even going to create a service, but we're not going to use a service right now, so we can delete or ignore that. Um, it's going to create a resource for us and just create a module, a model. But none of those are going to be sufficient for what we want to do. And so we're going to go through and modify them in this order. Now we could have modified them in any order, but to me this seems to make the most sense to modify the model for us to represent what is it that we want to store, um, get it from the user and send to the backend or we receive from the backend. And the resource is how we communicate between frontend and backend. And so this is our RESTful calls and stuff that we use in the NG resource um, service. Our deal encapsulates you know, how we use this service so anything that uses the DEO doesn't exactly know how the data access object is really getting our model. You know, where is it sending and putting it? It could have been locally, from a file, from wherever. So uh, DEO is using the resource to, in order to, um, the resource class that we're going to write. And um, our controller uses the DEO, of course, and that encapsulates, from our controller's point of view, it encapsulates exactly where our, module, our models and the data is stored, right? What's stored locally, what's stored remotely, all that is encapsulated um, by this resource who takes care of the HTTP request, RESTful request, and the DA, of course, is hiding that. And then the view, so the controller gets some stuff and puts it in through the, uh, for example, retrieve a list of um, our tasks from through the DAO, who gets it for, for over rest and present it to the view for display and that's in our list view and then of course if we want to edit something or we create a new task of course that gets presented to the controller and the controller sends it to the DO to say hey save this and the DO says oh I know I have to save that using restful call to the back end okay so that seems to make sense and in terms of view one of the things we're gonna actually work on and let's uh, we're going to split our view uh, a little bit. So we're going to split our view so we can have a listing. So for a list view, for example, so a list view, right? So list, and we're going to have a create um, so you can create thing. And maybe in this video, we will probably have a edit also. We'll see how much we, we have a lot of work ahead of us. So let's see, maybe we'll leave this as an exercise. Exercise for reader, XR. Uh, exercise for reader uh, well for student <laughs> okay so we got to get started because we have a lot of work ahead of us so let's store that um, save that minimize and let's jump in so like I said last time we create for our client site a task and it creates all these different things so uh, we can go ahead and I'm gonna delete it and just recreate the whole thing just so I run it and I know so in the test directory it created um, this task uh, module here and da 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 um, all these things for for task and so I'll delete that too. Okay, and so I'm just going to rerun it. So if you notice, I'm back in our chapter ten directory. Um, I started up MongoDB over there, um, running it against this data directory, and then I went into our project directory and started up my editor. So now in here, I'm going to run, so if I do ls, I'm going to run yo ng full stack colon module, and the module we want to create is task, and um, then feature, and then the task directory, okay? 
Does that make sense? And so I'm going to press enter. And so we can see it create all these things and it created some stuff in the test directory, which I'm going to ignore for now. Again, please do not ignore testing. Okay. I'm going to open this up a little bit and I'm going to go here, open up task and I'm going to look. And again, we said we want to start with module with the model. So we're going to go here and we have a task model, which I'm going to rename as capital task, right? Look with single singular. And um, there's our task function. So this just give it the name, the factory, the name task. And we went over what a factory is versus a service. Service runs the new on whatever you return, the function return, whereas a factory inserts whatever value you already returned. So here we're going to create a constructor function, and that's going to be used over and over. And um, we don't need new to be run on it because we're going to do new on it if we want. Okay, so what do we want for our model? Well, it would make sense if our model kind of closely align with our backend. So task deal model. So our backend has subjects. And let me put along a couple more. Uh, it also has a body and um, owner ID and a done field. Come on, a done field. Uh, it also has a created on. Okay. And so we'll leave that for now. That doesn't mean that no, no other field can be added here. As we know, we don't even put in underscore ID here, but uh, MongoDB gives us that and we'll still be able to get it in our th um, thing. You want to think of this here as what properties can I pass in when I'm constructing this object that um, I want to be used in order to validate it. So for example, um, if you look at, huh, so we're missing a function here actually. We, su we should have a, when we say um, this function, you know, uh, task, we pass, we create a task or task construction function. Not only you have this, 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 that, this, and this, but it should also take like a task object and it should use like ng extend to say ng that extend, if I remember correctly, extend, you know, this with um, the task um, object that we pass in, pass in here. So how do I know that? Well, I don't know why, um, yep, it should be more like this, right? XT and then this with whatever object was passed in there. And of course we can do some validations as they did here on our task also. Um, and so we can re rename this from that to task-model. Uh, that's much better name. All right. So now we seem to have a decent task that says this is a construction function that takes an object and these are the properties and then it's going to extend set those properties appropriately if their values are if keys are provided on this object. Um, is valid function? Well, we can extend this to say a valid task is one that has a subject. Um, yeah, come on. Come on, so S-U-B-J-E-C-T, subject. And a uh, data board. Well, no. A valid task is one that has, but well, once we're creating one, a valid task, all we require when we create a, um, a task is that it has a valid subject. Now, in terms of order ID, we can decide whether we put that in on the front end or we put them in the back end. So I don't want to make that decision right now. So I'm going to leave it out and just say a valid task is one that has a subject, right? And so uh, return um, that, that is true and maybe uh, that, that is string. And uh, ng that is, I think, uh, is string. Let's see. What is that method called? Underscore, oh, ng is string. Okay, so is string, just is string. Is string and is this string, which is this, that subject. All right, so if subject is a string and subject is valid, well, um, I really don't need um, both of these, I just need to return um, this. And if, for example, I wanted to do a minimum length, I could do something like this and um, you know, actually, I could do something like this. A string 
is define a string and so paste this there and let's see bam so is defined if this is defined subject as you be J E C T and we can also do a minimum length like here. So for our minimum length, I can type that, but when I type it when I could just go over there, copy it, and then I can say if it's define if underscore is defined and underscore is defined and a string and you know uh length so to check in the length it's just going to be uh let's see uh what's the easiest way it's big enough it's just simply you know that length is greater than whatever okay so um and then if this that subject that length is greater than or equals to uh, whatever min accepted length is okay so pretty simple test let me close this in parentheses pretty simple test to ensure that though it's defined this property is defined it's a string and the length of it is thing so okay so that returns uh, thing so okay here i need to change the name to task to match this function here because that's the function we're defining and then i return task okay so i think that takes care of our model and that's all we need so at the beginning of the video i said these are all the things we're going to cover in this video well i recorded all exactly what i said we're, i was going to cover but the video turned out to be an hour and 30 minutes long so what i decided to do was just cut it up into logical parts those parts that you see there so this video i'm going to just cover editing the model alone which is why it ended as it just did and so the future videos you're going to see that i'm going to pretty much give an intro jump into the pieces i cut out from that much longer video let that play as it was recorded and then i'm going to give the outro so that's just to let you know why the, the editing might seem a little abrupt in places that's because it was a much longer video i just had to cut it up because i don't think you're going to sit and watch a 130 minutes long video plus it made sense to just kind of cut it up into the nice little bite sizes all right so hopefully you learned something with the previous video on how we edit the model after we create our module and if you have questions post them on the video and uh, on youtube there um, thanks for your time thanks for subscribing thanks for spreading the word and see you in the next video bye